Okay, so let's look at some uh, post-quantum cryptography methods. For this, we'll have a look at some public key encryption methods and then go on to the contenders that we have at the current time. We'll look at some key exchange performance tests and cycles and also look at uh, digital signature uh, performance test titles. So the paper outlined some tests that we did on uh, Raspberry Pi. Uh, this, this presentation will outline uh, the methods as applied to their cycles on a, on a system. Okay, so public key encryption, uh, fairly standard. We have a key pair, we encrypt with one key and we decrypt with the other. Public key encryption involves using Alice's public key to encrypt and Alice's um, private key to, to decrypt. When it comes to signatures, we reverse that, we take a message and we use Alice's private key to sign that message and Alice's public key to be able to verify the signature. We also use public key encryption, uh, typically with an elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman for key exchange, uh, where Bob and Alice can generate a private key or a secret, pass the public keys, and at the end of it, using a key derivation function, they will end up with the same key. So the risks that we have is not only from uh, public key encryption and digital signatures, but also for key exchange. The three main methods that we have for our public key encryption methods, RSA, ElGamo, and Elliptic Curve, all three methods have been proven uh, to be uh, vulnerable to uh, a quantum computer attack. So we need to uh, move away from these methods toward a post-quantum crypto method. For elliptic curve, basically we have a base point on the curve, we have a secret key, we then generate another point on the curve, which is the secret key times the base point to give us another point on, on the curve. The secret key is kept private and the public key is made public. One of the most popular applications of this is within uh, our elliptic curve uh, digital signature algorithm for signing. With this, uh, Bob signs a message with his private key and then uses a random nonce and a hash of the message and uses some calculations, calculates the signature R and S and then we verify that using Bob's public key and the hash of the hash of the message. Unfortunately, ECDSA will be vulnerable to uh, quantum computers. So the methods that we'll see that we see uh, include curve two five five one nine, sept two five six k one, and p two five six. These produce the standard signature methods that we see and also the key exchange methods. And these are vulnerable to quantum computers. So let's have a look at the time, at the uh, the basic methods that we have. Ones that uh, are existing are known as hash-based methods. At one time, what we needed was to be able to create a whole lot of private keys, and then what we would do is we would create a Merkle tree to define the root of this. This was a stateful system. Fortunately, new methods have come along to improve this method and uh, and make it stateless and to also use symmetric key methods. We have code base methods like Mac Macleese, uh, which uh, allow which have been around for a long time and uh, have been proven uh, to be secure from attack. Then we have the multivariate polynom uh, quadratic uh, methods. One of the methods that's, that's uh, defined here is the oil and vinegar method. And this is where we create our, polynomial, our polynomials and then have a trap door within uh, the, 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 the method. One of the most popular methods is uh, using uh, learning with errors uh, along with uh, lattice-based uh, methods. This has been shown to produce fairly small digital signature sizes and also for key exchange. The last area is isogenies and these use elliptic curves to be able to map from one elliptic curve uh, to, the, to the next. 
Okay, so we have hash based methods and uh, uh, mul multivariate uh, 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 quadratics. Uh, we have the code based and then the isogenies. So let's have a look to see uh, which uh, is the best method for a post quantum crypto. So the timeline that we see is that uh, in 2016, a post-quantum crypto project was started by NIST and they've went through three different rounds and we're now at the final stages. Who knows how long it will take for uh, quantum computers to go into production, but obviously we need to start to migrate away from our existing public key methods towards our, our, our post-quantum crypto. In the final, what, what we see is there are four contenders for key exchange stroke public key uh, encryption methods and uh, three finalists for digital signatures. Along with this, uh, NIST want to make sure there is an alternative winner uh, because they don't want to rely on just one different method, such as if a lattice method wins, then there needs to be a replacement uh, or an alternative for it in the standardization process. So we have uh, Macalise, which has been around for a long time, code based, uh, Kyber, uh, Crystal's Kyber, which is a lattice based method, NTRU, again a lattice, and Sabre, another lattice method. So it's likely that, poth that, that uh, lattice methods may actually win the key exchange uh, method. When it comes to digital signatures, we see two lattice methods, uh, a crystal's dilithium, a falcon, and then a, a multivariate a polynomial method uh, called uh, rainbow. Rainbow is known as an oil and vinegar uh, method. If you want to see any of the methods in operation, then you can uh, go to this link here. For the alternatives, we see Bike, Frodo KEM, HQC, NTRU, and Psych. Psych is the only isogeny based uh, method there. For the alternatives for our signatures, uh, GMMS, MSS, Picnic, and Sphinx Plus. Uh, this one is a hash based stateless, hash based zero knowledge proof. And then this is a multivariate uh, method. Okay, so let's look at the performance tests that we see within uh, our, our methods for key exchange. So the key exchange methods also include public key encryption methods. So the finalists for this one is McLeese, uh, Kybar, NTRU and Sabre. And they vary in the sizes of the uh, the sizes of the keys that are produced, and also in their performance. So the setup that we created is using the lib libOQS, and this is, allows us to be able to run all of the finalists and the alternatives on uh, different types of systems. So in the paper. Uh, we see the run on a, on a Raspberry Pi and within the the uh, the mechanisms that uh, have been defined in there. So in terms of the signature schemes that this library supports, you will see we have Sphinx uh, here, Rainbow, Picnic, uh, Falcon and Dilithium and then for the key exchange, McLeese uh, Frodo KEM, HQC, Kybar, NTRU, NTRU Prime, Sabre and Psyche. And within each of these we see different levels defined. Level 1 is, is the baseline and that's 128 bit equivalent security as we would get with the EES. 192 bit security is level 3 and 256 bit is level 5. And each of the implementations have a different implementation for each of the different uh, each of the different levels. So in the paper, we see uh, the impact it has on the uh, on the Raspberry Pi. 
But if we look more genetically as in, at the number of cycles, because the number of cycles will really depend on the clock speed or the, will uh, give us the total time in relation to the, the, the clock speed. So here are the results here. And what I've done is I've banded them together to show anything between one and times two is in green as identified here. And then between two and 10 in yellow. And then we see uh, the different shades of orange for between 10 and 100, between 100 and 1000, and then uh, time over 1000. So the dark orange here uh, that we see uh, relates to a factor which is over a thousand times uh, more than the baseline. In this case, the baseline is taken from here and also here and here. So we see it's a factor times one. And then we see the factors of each of the different uh, evaluations uh, here. So in terms of key generation in in, with a key uh, exchange, what happens is that Bob will encrypt a key uh, and then encapsulate it and then send it to Alice. Alice will then decapsulate it. That's public key in operation, but we're also applying that into key exchange. So we can see here, these are the number of cycles per second that uh, were taken. Kyber is top here and generally does well in, in the encapsulation and the decapsulation. And we could give it a scoring factor here and generally receives 10 out of 10 for each of the areas. Next up, we see Cyber, uh, Kyber. Uh, we see Sabre here, a lightweight version of Sabre, the level one here, doing fairly well, maybe just reducing a little bit in terms of the decapsulation. But NTRU comes in here alongside uh, our Sabre. So generally Kyber and Sabre NTRU do well. We start to see HQC and Bike around here and the Frodo KEM. And if we keep going down, we start to see the isogeny based uh, methods around here and here. And then in the end, we've, we have the code based method of McAleese so generally we can see that uh, these methods here, the non-lattice ones typically, are struggling a little bit in terms of the key generation and not doing as badly for encapsulation and decapsulation. But when we start to look here at the isogeny based ones and the code base, generally they are struggling and we see large factors. And especially here and here, uh, McAleese produces key sizes which are much, much larger than we would have with our lattice-based methods. So if we created a little scoring system, this would be our scoring uh, here. Kyber, generally the, the fastest in terms of the uh, cycles for key generation, encapsulation, and decapsulation. Then we move on to Saber, NTRU, and then finally on to uh, the uh, bike, McAleese, HQC, and, and so on. Generally, it's the lattice methods which are, are performing the best across the board here, and Kyber especially does well against the other ones. If we now look at the key sizes uh, that we produce, then we will see actually that in this case, it's the isogenies which do well in terms of, uh, of small uh, key sizes. The, they generally produce the smallest ones for the public key, uh, also for the cipher, uh, the secret, and then the, the shared value. Kybar, as we see, the, these methods here, generally produce larger uh, public key, public keys in relation, but only probably times two or times three compared with the smaller key sizes of the uh, uh, isogenies. And then 
their secret value, the private key, is generally much larger than the compressed versions of the isogenies. If we compare these factors with these ones, we can see that the lattice ones generally produce uh, much larger uh, uh, secret keys. Then when we look uh, down here, we can actually see that uh, McLeese and the code-based uh, methods really struggle in terms of the public key that's produced and also in terms of the private key. Although the cipher uh, that's produced uh, when, we, when we encrypt is relatively small uh, compared with, with others. But again, generally across the board, the lattice methods perform fairly well here in terms of their key size. Now let's look at uh, our digital signatures, dilithium, falcon and rainbow with the alternatives uh, in there too. The Raspberry Pi uh, values are, uh, evaluations are given in the paper. But now we take a more general approach to the number of cycles that are actually taken. And in this case, it's actually the, uh, the hash-based zero-knowledge proof method of picnic which does the best in the uh, key generation, but certainly not good in terms of the signing and the verification. When we move on to the hash-based methods, then we see they generally struggle across the board uh, for key generation, signing and verification. And the same again, we see here them generally uh, struggling uh, for that. But again, the lattice-based methods are fairly, fairly uh, good across the board and provide a good compromise in terms of the key generation, the signing and the verification. When it comes to key sizes, the key sizes, we actually uh, uh, see the, the, uh, the hash-based methods generally uh, the best but not so good in terms of the size of the signature that they actually uh, produce. Uh, Picnic here uh, struggles in terms of the signature also. Rainbow, the, uh, the, the multivariate method, struggles for both the public key size and the private and the secret key, but generally produces a small signature. <laughs> so each of the methods have strengths and weaknesses and again, it's the lattice methods which seem to be the best compromise, uh, not the smallest uh, public and private key sizes or signature sizes, but certainly are acceptable across the board. Okay, so really in conclusion, the hash-based methods produce small key sizes for digital signatures, but produce relatively large uh, signatures overall. And, uh, and seem to be slow on the Raspberry Pi. For the multivariate methods, they have large si key sizes but small signatures, and again, they're slow on the Raspberry Pi. The lattice methods generally are a good compromise for both key and signature sizes, with dilithium being the best. For key exchange, again, the lattice methods tend to be the best performers, and on the Raspberry Pi, the Kyber performed the best. Slow methods included NTRU for slow key generation and also for our isogeny based uh, methods. If you're interested, all of the methods are implemented here in, in uh, Golang and also in Rust uh, that you can actually investigate and all of the results are given there too. Okay, thank you.